Alright, so this will be part one of my Splinter Soul Pandora Tomorrow Any Percent tutorial. There's a few things I want to go over <coughs> before we get into the meat of the video. First thing is controls. I really don't have to change any of these keybinds at all. Uh, what I suggest that you do though is that you change these to what you're comfortable with. Uh, two particular keybinds I want to divert your attention to is quick save and quick load because with the route that I'll be showing you in this tutorial series uh, you'll be quick saving and quick loading a lot so every time you want to quick save and quick load it will be kind of annoying to have to reach over to F5 and F8 every time so I just highly suggest that you change those two key lines to again whatever you're comfortable with the thing with quick save and quick load in particular though is you can't change it through the controls menu. You have to change these keybinds through modification of game files, which I have a tutorial that I'll link in the description that explains how to do that. But yeah, those are the controls. Uh, next thing is difficulty. Uh, for this run and for this route that I'll be showing you, uh, you want to play on normal difficulty. You can run on hard just know that it's a lot riskier and also a little slower but yeah this tutorial will be intended for people running on normal difficulty if you run on hard difficulty it's pretty much exactly the same thing but like I said there's some things that are a bit slower on hard but yeah basically I highly suggest you run this on normal difficulty although if you're running on hard you can still learn some things from this tutorial now the other thing is, I'll be doing, like, this tutorial is meant for the PC version of the game. If you play on Xbox, just know that there's some strats that you won't be able to do. Uh, because the thing with Xbox is it doesn't have access to frequent saving and loading like the PC version does. So you won't be able to do a piece of tech that I'll explain in the second part of the tutorial called buy check skips that you won't be able to do as often on Xbox and also if you're playing on GameCube and PS2 versions don't bother with this tutorial because uh, this version is completely different from those two versions because of how different the map layouts are between the two but yeah with all that out of the way We'll get into it here. Alright, so whenever you start a new file, you'll get this lockpick minigame. Uh, the pattern is the same every time. It's S and then W. Or S and then D, rather. And also with cutscenes, you can skip them by pressing spacebar, enter, or left click. Alright, we'll go into the first mission here, which is Dilly Tamar. Alright, so first thing here, or yeah, first thing I should go over. Uh, timing starts as soon as you gain control. Uh, yeah, but for simplicity's sake, if you're new, you can just start time as soon as you start moving. By the way, want to run up to this edge of the pier, jump up, and then climb up on top of it. Let's work on Turn the corner here. Uh, you want to jump to this ladder to get a bit of climbing. Alright, you want to jump towards this pole right here, just slide down it, just like that. Press jump to bring your legs up as you go down the pipe. And then, right around when you get to right there, you want to press crouch to drop down from the ladder. And run forwards and jump to grab onto this pole. Go along this pipe. Right around here. You can you want to bring your legs up to go over this barrier. If you want to be super safe, you can bring your legs up a bit farther back than the point that I'm going to show you here. Yeah, either way, you want to bring your legs up and then go over this barrier. Uh, press jump once you get over the barrier to bring your legs down. Uh, cycle through your inventory. In my case, it's the tab key. 
uh, to bring up the disposable pick. Once you get to the edge of that little pier there, you want to drop down from the pole and run along here from the store. And over here to the store, you can just run to the door like I did right there, but there's another med you can use that I don't really suggest it, but it's the option is there if you want to go for it. Basically, you want to jump over this table just like that without getting a little climb animation like this right here. The cue for it is a little inconsistent from my experience. Basically, you want to jump right around where my cursor is pointed. Either way, you want to go over to the store, press your fire button to use the disposable pick to pick the lock, and then open the door. Jump partway up this pole to skip a bit of climbing. Then open this hatch. As soon as Sam drops down from the hole here, you want to press crouch. That'll skip a landing animation where Sam falls on the ground and then goes into a crouching stance like I'm in right now. You want to go over here. You can run down the stairs and then turn around, but there's a little trick you can do. It's a small time saver where you turn around there and you'll notice I'm standing on this bit of collision that's jutting out from the platform here. I want to try to get on this bit of collision to run forward right there. Demonstrate it again. Just like that. You want to turn your camera kind of quickly because otherwise if you don't turn your camera quickly enough, you'll just veer off to the site like that and fall off the platform and won't save as much time. It's not strictly necessary if you're new, but I recommend that you go for it because the option is there. Either way, you want to go down these stairs, turn around, and go towards this crawl space. When you go into this crawl space, you want to do a roll, and do another roll. As soon as you get out from the crawl space, let go of forward, and then press crouch to get up. Because if you hold forward and crouch to try to uncrouch, Sam will instead do a roll, and you don't want that. So yeah, let go of forward, then press crouch to get up. Right on top of this platform here. When you get to that point, right around here, that auto save will trigger. Once that auto save triggers, you want to pull your pistol out for an AI manip, which is something you'll be doing pretty frequently in this run. Uh, one, one particular thing that makes this AI manip pretty easy uh, is if you have the pistol out and you press the Alt Fire button, and this in my case it's right click, just like that. It'll bring up this LED, red laser sight, and it makes it this red laser sight makes it a lot easier to aim accurately with the pistol. Now I'll be using a few strats in this run, uh, the first of which being right here. With or without the red laser sight, though, uh, like I said, you want to pull out the pistol once the auto save triggers and shoot the wall. Go into this wall and get behind cover. As you move to the right here, you want to start spamming interact, in my case it's the space bar, in order to do a SWAT turn to get past that wall. There's a couple of fields of landmines we'll have to get past here. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can get past each of them. For this first one, you can just jump over it like that. Pretty easy, but it's a little hard to see where the landmines are if you don't have the thermal vision on. So if you really want to go for the jump over the landmine strat, I highly, highly suggest that you use the thermal vision. If you don't want to, though, a uh, visual cue that I use for the jump for this landmine field uh, is you see this plank right here. You want to jump once you get to around right there where my pistol reticle is pointed. Just like that, and you'll get over the landmine field. You obviously don't want to jump too late, though, or else you'll hit the landmines and die. In case I keep jumping too late. Yeah, that's exactly why I use the thermal vision to get an easier visual cue for that jump. But yeah, there's that. If you find that to be a bit difficult for you, you can just roll through this crawl space. And like the previous crawl space, 
let go forward and then press crouch to uncrouch. Right, we have another landmine field here. You can do what you did before, where you jump over the landmine field, just like that. Or what you can do is you can jump on top of this box, get to the very run to the very edge of the box, and then jump. Either way, you want to get over that field of landmines, and then run over here. Turn the camera to face this wall, and hold right. Jump twice, like that, to do a split jump. And ideally, when you do the split jump, you're facing in this direction. If you end up facing in this direction, that's fine. Just tap D, or right, to face in the proper direction. And then once you're faced towards this ledge, uh, you want to press jump to both climb up and then climb up on top of the ledge. And then once you're up here, run through here. This area is pretty linear, so it's not too hard to figure out where to go. There's a pipe you're supposed to climb down here, but scroll off the edge, and you avoid having to climb down the pipe. And there's this little stream here. You want to hug the left side of this stream uh, once you get until you get past that ridge, because if you don't do that, then the guard will see the guard will see you, and pull an alarm on you, and you don't want to get an alarm pulled on you, because uh, with this mission in particular, if you get any alarms at all, you'll fail the mission, so you want to be kind of wary of that as you go through here. But yeah. Next thing is we have to knock out this guard to get to that pipe over there. There's a couple of ways you can go about doing that. The first method that I'll show you is really easy and really safe. Basically, you just want to go in a crouching stance like this, and then sneak up to the sky. Just like that. Really easy and not too hard to get down. The other method you can use... Oh, I'll have to go through this section again since I forgot to make a quick save. Whoopsie. <laughs> These things happen. Don't worry about it. Minor technical difficulty on my part. There we go. The situation is I'll just quick save the clip past this dialogue. Okay, so. The other method you can use, and it's the method that I use in my runs, and I believe Kirchu does in his runs as well, as you run up to the sky and jump man. three times. Let's be sure that you don't get that little animation I just got where Sam gets stuck in place and doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna jump three times just like this. If I can get it, that is. And then knock him out. If you're too the reason getting a stumble animation is bad there is if you're too slow going up to him with that other method I just showed you, uh you will get seen by the guard, get an alarm pulled on you, and you'll fail the mission. Yeah, jump three times. Either way you wanna one second. Okay, I thought I was about to sneeze there. Ignore that. Anyway, uh, either way, you want to run up to this guard and knock him out. Uh, you're actually meant to interrogate this guy, but you don't actually have to interrogate him to progress with the mission. You just have to run up to him and knock him out. So you don't get seen as you go up to this pipe. Either way, knock him out and then run over to this pipe and climb up to get to the next checkpoint. A kind of visual cue I use for splitting on each checkpoint is I wait until the a load splash screen for the loading screen appears. As soon as that appears or starts fading in, I press the split key. And that's what I do for each checkpoint. Alright, so now we're coming up to probably the hardest part of this mission which is the Sedano section. Uh, there's an antagonist in the game named Sedano, and what usually happens in this bit is he kills a hostage, and you have to wait until he kills that hostage to progress. There's two methods you can use for going through this area fast. First, I'll show you the intended method, and then, which is easier and really safe and consistent, and then I'll show you the other method, which is harder, 
and not not something I really recommend going for if you're a beginner, but the option is there once you get a bit better at the game. Either way, you want to uh, go up to the slider and jump up both of them to save a bit of time. Make a quick save there in case you've messed something up along the way. And like I said, first I'm going to show you the intended method, uh, which is go up to here, get behind cover, and sneak along this wall until you get past that windowsill. Move along here, get behind cover again. But why me? Go over here to initiate this dialogue to initiate this dialogue sequence between Sedano and the hostage. Just Pandora tomorrow, and then with a lot of gibberish. Ah, I couldn't understand any of it. Give me your bonds. I thank you. Thank you. All right. Once Sedano kills the hostage, you can hold right and then interact to do a swat turn. Get out from cover, move along this wall here, be sure to hug the wall so you don't get seen by the guards there, and interact with this pipe to climb up it. Be sure to not move too far out though, otherwise you'll fall in the fire. Move along the sledge until you get past those wooden or bamboo pegs right there, and drop down. And open this window to get in this room where Shetland and his interrogator are. So that's the... That's the casual method or intended method for doing that. Now I'll show you the speedrun method for going through there. Just click saying click loading past that dialogue so it's an abstraction. Alright, so here's the speedrunning method. First you want to do a roll as you land. And as you do the la as you land, you want to do a really wide turn to get past that windowsill. Rather, land, do a wide turn by holding W and D until you get to right here. And then roll into this windowsill. You don't want to hug the windowsill too close because otherwise this will happen. You'll get stuck on this bit of invisible geometry that sticks out from the window. Yeah, take a really wide turn, do a roll into this window. And you want to jump along here. And you want to not stop jumping, otherwise you'll get caught by the guards and fail the mission. And that's the hard part, is not getting that stumbling animation. The general rule for avoiding the stumbling animation is if you touch jump, if you press jump as soon as you touch the ground, you won't get that stumbling animation. And just jump along here. Take a really wide turn at the end there to make sure you don't bonk the wall. And then jump towards this part right here. Generally what I do to aim for it is I try to aim towards the rightmost part of the windowsill. And that should get you on top of the ledge. If you're having trouble jumping towards the ledge, you can just do what I showed you before, where you climb up a pipe like this, move to the right once you get to the top here, and then drop down. It's a pretty tough skip, but you should be able to get it with practice. And it's pretty simple in concept as well, you just want to jump along the balcony like I showed you just a bit ago. It's kind of like bunny hopping where you just, like I said, you want to tap jump as soon as you touch the ground. I'll show it again in how I would usually go in a run, in a fast manner. Also for precise skips like this, I highly recommend uh, watching my inputs to see what I do. So you can get a better idea of how to do it. So yeah, either way, when I get to the sledge here, you can't open this window to get in, but what I recommend you do, 
Uh, there is a rather there is a method you can use to save a bit of time compared to opening that window, just to run to this balcony right here. There's a few methods you can use to get to this, or rather, there's a visual cue you can use to get onto this balcony. Basically, what you do is you'll notice uh, the band of Sam's night vision goggles right there in the middle of his head. You want to line that up with the start of the wall there next to the balcony. Line it up like so, run forward, and hold left. Or rather, run forward, and once you get onto the balcony, turn the camera left, and you land on the balcony. Pretty easy to line up. Shouldn't take too much time to get used to. If you're having trouble with that, though, you can just open the window like I showed you. Either way, you want to get into this room. Run over to this interrogator right here and knock him out. Run into Shetland here right after you knock the guard out. Hold the interact key to bring up this menu. And then press up once, or W once, to get to this talk to option. That'll start the conversation with Shetland here as soon as possible. And it's important that you do that quickly because otherwise uh, Shetland can get teleported to a position where he can't advance the conversation. And then just smash this conversation by uh, mashing spacebar. You don't have to mash spacebar or... Yeah, there's spacebar or enter to get to that conversation super hard. But you do have to up mash it rather quickly. I'm gonna quick say quick low pass this dialogue so it isn't a distraction while I try to explain stuff. Okay. So, upcoming in this next room, we're gonna be doing a bit of speed tech called crouch glitching. Uh, this is what it looks like. You basically want to pull forward and then mash crouch like you're seeing me do right here. With Pandora tomorrow in particular though, uh, there's a bit of a catch to it. You can't crouch glitch at full speed. Uh, so for example, I'll hold forward and mash C here and I'm just doing some rolls instead of crouch glitching. Uh, however, crouch glitching works at one notch below full speed. So you'll see there I was mashing crouch and I didn't do a crouch glitch while I was at full speed. But I'll move the movement speed to one notch of the scroll wheel below full speed. You'll notice that I can crouch glitch. Managing that well in the speed is part of the movement in the speed run, but don't worry about it too much. Uh, when you're new, and I'll show I'll, like I'll show you points where you can where you can change the movement speed with the scroll wheel beforehand, just so you don't have to change it on the fly. Right. Anyways, once you're done with that conversation with Shetland, run over to the store, and then scroll wheel down once to get your movement speed to one notch below full speed. Open the door. There's this guard on the balcony next to me, right there. You want to crouch glitch past him like this. And once you get to these sets of pillars right here, you can get up and start running. As you go down here, you want to hug the right wall going down the stairs, like so. So this guard right here does not see you. And then there's a couple of approaches you can use to get through this area. A few, and there's a few methods that I'll show you. First up, first thing you can do is go up to this guard and knock him out. Uh, shoot this wall to distract the guard. Or, didn't work. So what you're meant to do, I failed there, uh, is you shoot that wall to distract that guard over there. After you knock this guard out right there. Then you go behind cover on that cabinet there and let's do a SWAT turn to that couch right there and then run through this area by end up messing it up so I can't show you what it looks like unfortunately so I'll just have to show you the fast method for going through here which entails 
running through this gap right here and just hugging the right, like hugging the left wall here so the guards don't have as good of a chance to shoot you. And then just run through this area. You will take damage going through here, doing it this way. But it's fine. You don't have to worry about damage really from here on out or in that area. Like I said, you just want to be sure that you're hugging this little barrier to my left uh, once you get past the couch. Yeah, if you just copy what I did there, you should be fine going through there. Open this door. I know it's that little spot between the pillars to trigger a cutscene. Alright. So there's three methods you can use for going through here. Again, I'm going to quick say quick left past the dialogue so it isn't a distraction. Alright, so there's a few methods you can use for going through here. Which I have to be kind of quick about doing in order to not get killed. Uh, you know, I'll just kill these guards to precaution. Why not? Or not kill them and knock them out. <laughs> the, th the spontaneous things that happen when doing a tutorial. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Where is this other guy? Ah, whatever, I'll just leave him. He probably won't find me. Alright, so, anyway, <laughs> uh, there's a few methods you, you can use for going through this area. The first is the intended method, uh, which is going under these spotlights that you see moving in front of me. Basically, you just hide behind this pillar, wait until a spotlight comes, and then get in the light of that spotlight. And just stay in the spotlight until it gets to the other end of the courtyard. As you'll see me demonstrate here. Because there's a sniper on the other side of the courtyard, and he has night vision goggles. So if you just try to run across this courtyard willy-nilly, he will find you and shoot you. And most likely kill you, because the sniper does a lot of damage. I believe he does half of your health bar. So yeah, that's the casual method for going through that courtyard. What you can also do is uh, bring your bring out your pistol, press the all fire to get bring out the red laser sight, and then uh, shoot at the wall to distract the guard, and then just run across the courtyard. And once you get to the end here, jump to these pipes, climb up. And then drop down. And then go over here to start this start a conversation with Ingrid in the room there. Another method you can use, uh, which I can't show here because I'm not at full health, uh, is there's this turret right here on the other side of this corridor. What you can do if you have full health <laughs> is you can run through this hallway tank the damage from the turret, and then get to the other end of the hallway that way. It's not as big of a time saver as the other method that I showed you, where you distract the sniper with the pistol shot, because you have to go through a bit more of the map. But the option is there if you find the sniper distraction to be a little tricky, because the shot for beginners to distract the sniper can be kind of precise. Yeah, anyways, to kind of help with the aim for the sniper distraction, you basically want to aim your reticle to about where it is right now, which isn't too precise. Bring out the red laser sight and then shoot. And then move across the courtyard. Either way, you want to get to this room here where uh, Ingrid is right there. And then start a conversation with her. Like with the Shellen conversation, you want to lightly mash spacebar or enter to get through the conversation. Can you read it? It's phonetical mom Your guess is as good as mine. Would you stay if I said no? 
Then you want to open this window, and as the window opening animation is playing, hold W to climb up onto the ledge as soon as the animation is done. Press crouch to land there without getting a hard fall. And roll off the edge here. You'll take a bit of damage, but don't worry about it. You take very minimal damage from that. Uh, shoot this guy until he's dead. And he takes around three body shots to kill. Generally, the rule of the guards on normal difficulty is they take three body shots to kill, so body shots are best, especially if you're new. Uh, activate that spotlight right there, and then roll off the edge to save a bit of time that you would spend climbing down the ladder. Now over here and kill this guard. Like with the previous guard, it takes three body shots to kill. And over to this ladder right here and jump up it to save a bit of time. And turn off the spotlight as well. Roll off the edge like with the previous spotlight. Then run along the pier here. It's pretty straightforward. To this boat right here. And that's the end of the mission. Alright. So that was the tutorial for the speedrun route of Dilly Tamor. Uh, like I said, this is part one of the tutorial. There's eight missions in the game, so one part for each mission. And in part two, we'll be taking a look at the cryogenics lab. I hope this was a good explanation of how to do the speedrun route for this mission. Bye!